Hey everybody, this is Franco, and in this video I want to tell you about the KL-5080H closed loop stepper drivers and motors sold by Automation Technology. I have a project right now where I needed a small NEMA 23 stepper motor with a quarter inch shaft. That was the, uh, that was the kicker. Most of these closed loop stepper motors that I, I have found all have metric 8 millimeter shafts on them. I needed one with a quarter inch shaft and that's what I have here. So I was really happy to find those because that prevents me from having to make adapters to mount these motors onto the little machine I have. So real happy quarter inch shaft for all you guys that need um, quarter inch uh, stuff for your projects. The drivers themselves are pretty small. They don't take up a lot of space. The only thing I'll say is there are no dip switches on these drives to make adjustments to them, so you have to do all that through the software. We'll talk about the programming of these in a second. The folks at Automation Technology recommend it a 48 volt, uh, 12 amp power supply, which is what I have right here. That's a little bit bigger than what I need for this project, but I'd rather have one big power supply than two uh, small power supplies. A lot of times I wind up having a separate power supply for each drive, which is okay. But that takes up more space. Having one big power supply is a little bit more space efficient. And Winston likes the heat that comes off of it, apparently. So he's, he's going to hang out while we do this video. Um, I do want to give you just a little bit of peripheral information. Uh, so if you go down... To the bottom of the web page here they'll give you all the specs they'll give you links to all the manuals i'm not going to go through all the details but i just want to say if you look at the the manual here they'll tell you the minimum voltage for the driver is 20 volts max is 50 typical is 36. so this 48 volt power supply is really really close to the max uh, all these power supplies have some adjustment on them. I, I dialed mine back as far as I could to a, just over 45 volts. Um, everything seems to be working fine. I've had these powered up here for over an hour. I haven't had any troubles. But I just want to throw that out there. Uh, so do your own research. Draw your own conclusions. I went with a recommendation from Automation Technology, but according to the manual, you know, a 36-volt power supply would work okay too. So uh, do whatever you need to do there and uh, I think you'll be okay. Like, like I said, I'm not going to go through all the details of, of the uh, specifications and everything. You, got, you can read that online. What I do want to talk about is the programming of this thing. Now you may not need to program these. I think they're Factory settings are probably going to be fine for most uh, most everybody. It appears that they uh, come from the factory set to, uh, let's see here, 4,000 um, pulses per revolution. I'm not sure if it, if it says that anywhere on this web page, but I believe their factory settings are uh, 4,000 pulses per revolution. If you need to program it, you need, a, you need to take a few steps. So there's no dip switches on the drive. Uh, there's nothing you can really adjust on the drive. So if you want to program it, you got to buy this programming cable, which is cheap. It only costs, costs $7, but it's a serial cable. So you're going to need an adapter. So I have a USB to serial adapter. It's a DTEC is the, the brand. I bought it off Amazon or eBay or something for like $15. It's plug and play, plug it right in, it works great. So you'll need the cable, you'll need the adapter. That's the easy part. Now here's the hard part. The uh, website here at Automation Technology, they have some software that you can download with the cable. Uh, none of the software worked for me. I, I had uh, zero positive results with the software, so I don't know what driver it's meant for, but I, I couldn't get it to work with these KL-5080H drives, but fortunately I have a drive software that I use with my other uh, lead shine type uh, drivers and it worked. It worked for these drives. So what I'll do, I will put a, uh, 
a link to my Dropbox location where you can download the software that I found to work. And hopefully it will work for you too. I'll also put a link to a, a video that's maybe I'll, I'll say like the sister video to this video that I'm making right now where I talk about programming those other lead shine drives. So you can watch that just as a reference. So when you follow the hyperlink, you're going to see there's, there's a Chinese version of the software and there's an uh, English version of the software. The English version will not work unless you install the Chinese version. So install the Chinese version, just put it on your computer, but then launch the English version. And this will pop up. And for me, I always have to go to COM5 and open. So I just opened the connection. And no, nothing happened yet, but we're, we're connected to the drive. And if you come up here to parameter, a blank screen will pop up and you say read drive. And bang, there you go. So those are all your drive settings. Now the first thing I would do before you make any changes is I would save all these settings somewhere. I would do a save as and save your factory settings. And I always, if I have like a, you know, I have three drives in a milling machine, I label them and I save a file for each one of the drives because I don't actually know what all settings are going on in here, what's specific to each driver. So if I have three drives, I make three uh, factory setting files that go, you know, cor that correspond with each of the three drives. So do that. Save your factory settings. Then you don't have to be too, like, afraid to make changes. You can make some changes right here on this screen. Just beware that when you make those changes, they will not be permanently saved in the driver until you hit this button, Download to Drive. You have to press Download to Drive to actually get the settings to go into the driver permanently. Uh, load to Drive will, will put them in the drive, but they will not be there permanently until you hit Download to Drive. Some other things that you can look at up here, so you have a... Uh, you have a little test routine. So I'm going to do motion test. I'm going to set it to 100 RPM. I have it repeating 10 times. We're going to go uh, both directions. Well, here, I'll show you what happens. So let me just put this right here. I'll press start. And you can see while that's running, the, the screen is giving you like your positional area but based off the uh, encoders. It gives you positional error data. So that's a little, little test uh, screen that you can use. You also have motor settings. If you press that, this is where you can change like the pulses per revolution. So both of my drives, the default was 4,000 pulses per revolution. You could make it 2,000 or make it uh, greater than that, but th this is where you change it. The I.O. button, this is where you go if you need to change the logic for the fault loop or the fault uh, connections or the enable connections, you can change that here. I've never messed around with the other stuff, but, uh, but I have had to change these for other drives. And uh, interestingly, I guess you'll see this is a 200 kilohertz drive. So I'm not going to talk about that in this video. I'll save that for a different video, but that's the speed at which this drive can read inputs, which is pretty typical. And um, error. There are no errors right now, so that's good. So yeah, so this is where you would um, go to uh, make changes to your drives. And um, I think a lot of this is self-explanatory. Just be careful, and when you're done, press download to drive. One thing I will say that, you know, if you're studying this screen and comparing it to yours, one thing that I did, I changed my holding current. It used to be, it defaulted to 50%. I changed my holding current to 20%. That'll be fine for the machine I'm working on, and what I found is by doing that, that really reduces the amount of heat that comes off of the, the stepper motors. Um, 
there's no need for them to uh, you know hold all that torque while it's sitting still. Okay, I can't think of anything else that I wanted to say. This video, we're we're at that 10 minute mark, so it's time to time to end this video. I hope this is helpful. I hope this helps you uh, get your get your projects uh, completed and you know build your machines and get your machines running. I uh, will probably do another video here soon where I actually connect these things up to the uh, Acorn board, which that is that is pretty much the Centroid Acorn products are the only thing that I, I use in my projects now. And uh, yeah, I'll do another video where I get the Acorn hooked up to this. We'll we'll talk about a few of the settings and uh, maybe we'll we'll talk about uh, a few other cool little things like um, you know the the processing speed, so the drives versus the Acorn board. The Acorn board is like a super fast board. It's capable of extremely high uh, frequent frequency rates, but not all the drives are capable of working that fast. So you have to uh, sometimes you have to play around a little bit here if you're experiencing certain certain weird little issues. It, it's because your Acorn board is screaming fast and your drives are not screaming fast. So we'll talk about that in another video. All right. Well, I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. Be safe. Catch you later.